All right, I want to welcome everybody. I see that there's still people signing on. However, we're going to get rolling because uh, we have to stay on schedule here. Again, welcome to the value and importance of third-party verified HPDs. I'm excited to be able to host this. I'm Tad Radzinski, and I'm with Green Circle Certified. And uh, just a couple housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, we're definitely going to be running through our presentation here. We have a series of a few panelists that are going to be speaking. And what I would ask is that during each presentation, if you have any questions, please type them into the question pane of your uh, GoToMeeting control panel, and then we will answer those at the end. We'll have plenty of time for uh, questions and discussion at the end. And uh, we really welcome questions because that definitely adds uh, value to not only you getting your questions answered, but having others on the call learn some additional things uh, as they get to talk uh, hear from the panelists and that kind of thing. So with that, uh, I'm gonna move forward here. And oh, there we go. all right, so I wanna introduce our speakers really quickly before we get rolling. Uh, John Geyer is the program director for the HPD Collaborative and he'll be speaking today about some of the things that are new and exciting with the HPD Collaborative and, and uh, how it's gonna make life easier for not only manufacturers, but also you in the architecture and design community. We have Elise Inglis from CertainTe. She's a technical product manager, and she's gonna be talking about her experience as a product manager with getting third-party uh, verified HPDs completed. And then we have Anne-Marie Ott, who's the Product Stewardship and R&D EHS Manager for Sangoban Corporation, which Sangoban actually uh, is the parent company of CertainTe. And Anne-Marie's role is she actually gets the fun of developing health product declarations for many of the different product groups within Sangoban and CertainTe. And she's gonna talk a little bit about her experience of the pros and cons of doing it and some of the tips and secrets that might make it easier for any of you that are in the manufacturing world that are looking to do these. We're also going to hear from Deanna Miklas today. She's a sustainability advisor at Perkins & Will. So we're going to get the perspective from the architecture and design community on how they're using HPDs, especially third-party verified HPDs. So um, really excited to have this panel. It's a great wealth of knowledge and experience here. Definitely take advantage of this group and ask your questions, and, and we'll happily uh, respond to them. So, with that, I'm going to get going here with John. So, John, you're ready to roll. Thank you, Ted. And we can go um, to the next slide and the next one. And as I get started, I'd like to say that there's a lot of information on these slides, but in the interest of time, I'm going to be going through them pretty quickly and just hit the high points. So if you have questions or want more detail, we can talk about that in the question period at the end of the call, or the slides will also be available after the webinar so that you'll have a chance to go back and review them. And please feel free to contact me with any questions you have at that time. But to get started, the objectives of the HPDC third-party verification program is basically to set up the framework for verifications to manage the credentialing and methodology for the verification. So we establish a standard methodology for how the verification will be done. And we also um, define and implement the requirements and approval process for verifiers. Next. Next slide. Yeah, I did advance, John. Are you not seeing it? Okay, so what is um it did advance now, it just took a bit. Yeah, it might be a little delay. So what is the third party verification? It's in... okay. Thanks. So the third party verification is an objective process um, that focuses on the HPD the HPD document. It's a desk audit, and we're looking at the quality of the document and how well it meets the requirements of the um, HPD open standard. We're not looking at the product 
that's represented in that HPDC. So we're not looking at the quality or the relative safety of the product. We're looking at the um, quality of the HPD document. Next. Okay, so the key elements of the verification um, is that it focuses on compliance with requirements of the HPD open standard. It confirms the product's formulation reporting matches the underlying supporting documentation and is aligned with the standard requirements in that way. And it also ensures that any non-disclosed proprietary information is accurately re represented. So again, we're focusing on the quality of the documentation. Next. So the benefits of the third party verification as we see them are that it provides manufacturers a reliable source for approved consultants to work with in developing and verifying HPDs. And it gives their customers an added level of confidence in their products. And it also allows them to demonstrate their commitment to providing quality documentation because they're willing to go through the extra step of verification. And one of the most important things we've heard back from manufacturers is that going through the verification process actually helps them with their internal processes. So even manufacturers that are fairly experienced with HBDs, that they're doing a very good job. Once we went through the detailed step-by-step -step verification, they find ways that they can improve their processes. And, and, and on the user end of the HBDs, um, the verified HBD provides additional credit for LEED 4.1, and it eliminates a considerable effort of having to go through and double check all of this information for themselves. Next. Okay, so what's new? The most exciting thing that we're seeing right now is um, as of May of this year, with the release of our version 2.2 builder, we've added the supplier HPD extension, which allows manufacturers to um, reach out to their suppliers and allow the suppliers to put the information in themselves um, in an automated way that makes it hopefully easy for them to do and also ensures the compliance with the HPD open standard. Next. So as I said, it provides a standardized way for manufacturers to request the information from suppliers. Um, by In the builder, they can just reach out and send the request to the supplier. It also, um, it's intended to help suppliers because it um, allows them more control over their information. So it allows them to enter the information themselves in the supplier HPD. And once they have that supplier HPD for a given product, if they have additional requests from other manufacturers, they don't have to go through the whole process of recreating it. They can just send the existing information to other customers as well. And the other part that's so important um, for them to have the control of the, their information is that they can choose not to disclose all of the cast numbers and names of the substances that they provide. We, of course, would prefer that they disclose all of that information. But one of the things that we found is that um, suppliers are uncomfortable with that and want to be able to um, enter their content information and have it properly hazard screened um, without necessarily disclosing all of that information. Next. And so because this non-disclosure is so critical to um, getting suppliers to participate in the process, um, we develop a process by which a prospective supplier can go into the builder with a free account and send themselves a request, then fill out the request in the supplier HPD platform and then send it back to themselves so that they can see exactly what the manufacturer is seeing um, when they receive their request. So they can um, show, see for themselves that information has not been disclosed. And this has been quite effective in reducing supplier anxiety and encouraging their participation in the program. Next. And that's pretty much all that I have today. I want to leave as much time as possible for the other presenters, but these are a few of the resources that are available um, with more information. And as I said, these slides will be available. If you have questions, we need to talk about them later in the call, or feel free to reach out to me whenever you want. Let me do the next slide, and I'm through, Tad.
Great. Well, John, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, very excited about the uh, HPD opportunity for suppliers or supplier HPD. That is definitely something that I think is going to really make life easier for any of the manufacturers that are out there that are trying to get this information. You'll you'll probably hear from Anne Marie and Elise about the challenges and some of the struggles of getting that data uh, as we go forward here and try to do the verification work. So anyway, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, I'm Tad Redzinski and I'm the certification officer for Green Circle Certified. And I will say that we had a, a major hand in working with the HPDC on developing the standard for third-party verification. Uh, our company, as well as uh, multiple other third-party verifiers, worked very closely with uh, John and his team to develop the guidance and the, and the methodolo methodology for doing third-party verifications of HPDs. So one thing that I can assure all of you on this call, that if you see that uh, a document an HPD is third-party verified, you have good confidence that that uh, product has been thoroughly vetted and that it is following all the requirements of the HPDC uh, third-party verification standard, which is really exciting. And uh, oftentimes what we do run into is struggles with the manufacturers having problems getting information on proprietary ingredients. So I think that supplier HPD is going to be a great thing to really make this uh, process a lot easier for not only manufacturers, but us as third-party verifiers going forward. So I, I appreciate that HPDC is, is driving that forward. So let's talk a little bit about, John mentioned in his uh, slides, the benefits of having uh, third-party verified HPDs. And th this, is, this is a real important aspect here. In LEED version 4.1 under the MR credit for building product disclosure and optimization, there's now a uh, line that occur that's listed right in the credit language that any compliant reports uh, listed above that includes HPDs and all these other ones with third-party verification that includes the verification of content inventory are worth 1.5 products or credit achievement calculations. So what that means to all of you on this call is if any of you are seeking to get a building lead certified and you're trying to earn option one, or you're selecting at least 20 different permanently installed products from at least five manufacturers that have some type of material ingredient report like an HPD, and you find out that these, some of them are, are third-party verified, it actually makes your life a lot easier. So we're gonna hear from Elise in a few minutes, and I know they have a number of third-party verified HPDs for insulation products. So let's imagine you're uh, doing a building and you install different insulation products. Uh, you basically could get essentially credit for three products if you select two products from CertainTe using their third-party verified HPDs. So that's one less product you have to chase down. It makes it streamlined. And it also gives uh, the architect and designer or the lead project team assurance that what they're putting in the building has been verified and, and is actually disclosing all the ingredients that need to be disclosed. So let's take a look at what one of these look like. Here's one of the certain teed insulation unfaced fiberglass bat and blanket uh, HPDs. And uh, the key things on here, you know, we're, they're disclosing down to a thousand parts per million. This is a real important uh, area that you need to see checked. If someone checks like per GHS SDS or per OSHA MSDS, those will not be compliant with what's required by uh, LEED to earn the credit there. So by having this 1000 PPM, this is definitely going to qualify for credit, just like we talked about on that LEED standard. The other thing that you can find out here is we look at, all right, what are what substances have been indicated in this HPD? Characterized means that the percent weight and role has been provided for all substances, and that's that's really important. Screen means that they've all been screened for hazards, so that's a yes. And then identified means that you've disclosed all ingredients and there's nothing proprietary. So even if it's listed proprietary, it's still going to include the uh, role and the amount and you know all the different things that are important. So you see here, here's a no button, and that's because there was some manufacturer or supplier that did not want to uh, give us the information. They, they gave us enough 
to get the HPD done, they wouldn't go down to the CAS level uh, in information, that kind of thing. So I'm hoping that the supplier HPDs are going to help that in the future. The other important thing that we'll look at here is the fact that this does show that it's third party verified. So when you see this little dot checked here, you know that this is going to qualify for 1.5 products in the lead standard. Uh, very important information here. The other thing that we did is, and you're, you're not going to see this on other insulation HPDs, we looked at some of the competitors of certainty. And based on what's required by the HPD Collaborative and the standard for third-party verification, we made sure that we were disclosing all the ingredients down to the level that was required. So you can see we got down to the level of information that was basically ingredients that were contained within the batch of making the glass and that kind of thing. And you know, this is something where some people may not want to disclose this because you know this particular thing, quartz, does draw a hazard. In fact, there's other competitors of certainty that have not disclosed this information. So it is important to know that this hazard does exist. However, uh, it does not necessarily mean there's any risk or exposure of that hazard in any way. So again, I just wanted to let you know, this is something that when you look at a third party verified and compare it to a similar product, someone that's not their third party verified in most cases you're going to see there's more ingredients disclosed which i think is what we're going to hear from diana what they're really looking for so i mentioned that proprietary ingredient thing you know this is a, a big deal and I, I love to give this example this is uh if you were going to make a pizza you know you think about what are the ingredients well we know pizza is typically going to be cheese and some kind of sauce and dough so if we kind of set up our this is the this is a beautiful way to set up your HPD tracking in terms of how you're verifying the materials and you're collecting the data. For this pizza, we know that we've got so much cheese. How much is the min and the max? We know what the roll is. We know there's no recycled content. Then we start to break down the sauce, and the sauce is real easy. We got a we got a CAS number for that. But then we start digging in, and suddenly we find out that there's these proprietary spices. That little bit of information, 4.8%. Uh, that is above the 1,000 ppm threshold. That's be a, a, above 0.1% of the product. So this is an example where we would need to get an understanding of at least what the role is and the affiliated hazards. Perhaps they're not going to disclose the CAS number that particular supplier. So again, this is the kind of thing, and I'm sure that Anne-Marie will talk a little more about this to some of the challenges they've had in getting that information. So I did want to also say that you know not only are our panelists interested this in this, but we have other companies out in the world that are definitely looking for third-party verified HPDs. Asa Aboy is a supplier; they're definitely promoting the third-party verification. That's one of their key uh, attributes that they definitely uh, strive for on every uh, material ingredient report they do. And then even on the general contractor side, you know we've heard from Skanska. That they're definitely looking for this information as well. So I'm excited that we know that there's going to be uh, more going on in the world of material and green reporting. You know, this has been evolving now for quite a while, and we're going to learn that it's more than a checkbox and lead. You know, that that lead credit for getting 20 permanently installed products that are disclosing is good, but if you looked at that credit, there was also option two, which talks about optimization, and that's where a, a manufacturer could really look at those ingredients and decide, do we want to change anything or, or you know, update anything? We also know that it's going to start to include risk and exposure. There's pilot credits now to start to evaluate that, which I think is very important because just a hazard, because a hazard is identified doesn't mean it's a, a risk or ex, of exposure to any of us. I think there's going to be a lot of education. I'm, I'm a professor at Villanova University. We have a master's in sustainable engineering. In my lecture next week to my advanced LCA, class is going to be what is material ingredient reporting, how does it interconnect with life cycle assessment, and how can you use this to understand what's going on with products. I think it'll go into the supply chain, and I also think that you're going to see a lot more agencies and retailers and corporations outside of building products and others using this. I know we have customers that we work with that are actually requiring this for materials and products they purchase, and they're not even getting LEED certified. So it is, it is up and coming, and I, I think uh, you know a lot of great things happening. So 
with that, I'm going to turn it now over to Elise and Anne Marie and uh, look forward to hearing from them. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anne Mariott. I'm the Product Stewardship Manager and R&D EHS Manager at Sangoban Corporation. Can you hear me all right, Tad? Yep, I hear you perfectly. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to present today with Elise. Elise, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Elise Inglesi. I'm the Technical Product Manager for the CertainTeed Insulation Group. Um, I'm a product manager for our HVAC products, but I also manage our product compliance, including all of our transparency documents for insulation um, within North America. Okay, you want to go to the next slide, please? Um, so, as you know, we're going to talk to you today about the health product declaration and the importance of third party verification. And we just put that um, windmills up to let everybody give a little plug for the wind farm that we've started this year at Sangoban. Next slide, please. So our agenda, um, we're going to go back and forth, Elise and myself, and we're going to give you a little bit of an overview about Sangoban, which I'll take, and then she'll give a more specific overview of certainty and some of the products that we focus on for HPDs. We're going to outline our process, talk about the pros and the cons, and then leave some time for questions. Next slide, please. So as Ted mentioned before, Sangaban is the parent company of CertainTeed. Next, please. Um, Sangaban Corporation, we design and manufacture a ton of materials. The focus that we're gonna talk about today is more on the building products, but we also are in the transportation area. We're in healthcare, making like Tigon tubing and IV bags. We do a lot with infrastructure and we have a large distribution network in Europe. We are headquartered in Paris, France. So our products provide not only comfort and performance, but they're also done for safety and security. We have some really interesting glass products that actually yield privacy, but we're not gonna discuss those during this presentation. Next, please. So again, as I mentioned before, we are a global company headquartered in Paris, France. Both Elise and I are in our North American headquarters in Malvern, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Philadelphia. We have roughly 170,000 employees. We were founded over 350 years ago um, with the Palace of Versailles and the mirrors, and that was kind of one of our claims to fame. We have over 1,000 manufacturing facilities worldwide. We have a commitment to be carbon neutral for by 2050, we're doing pretty good on that. Um, you can see we do make quite the deal of money there and we have sales outlets, we're in over 4,000 sales outlets again worldwide. So we are, um, can you go back one second? So even though we're global, we have um, several distributions and we break ourselves up into the different regions geographically. We have Southern Europe, Middle East, Africa, Northern Europe, Asian Pacific, and then the Americas. Go ahead, thank you. Elise, do you wanna talk about the portfolio? Yep, sure thing. Okay. So um, as Anne-Marie has mentioned, um, how large saint is, uh, the North American portfolio is really what we're gonna focus on here. Um, so within St. Cobain, there are products for core and shell, there are products for interiors, and certain teed falls in that product for interiors. As you can see, our customers are anywhere from owners and developers to the A and D community um, distributors and contractors. Next slide. At certain teed, we have five basic uh, business groups, so product groups. We have a roofing group. We have a siding group. Those are both part of our exterior product groups. Uh, but what we're going to focus on for the HPD is our interior product portfolio. So we have an architectural group, which includes our ceilings products. We also have a gypsum division and an insulation division. Um, within the interior products group at CertainTeed, we find it's really important not only to meet Syncobain goals and CertainTeed goals of offering uh, better products, 
but also uh, the AED community has been specifying products that are requiring higher levels of transparency. Um, and as we start focusing more on indoor environmental quality, the insulation gypsum and ceilings divisions have um, really stepped up over the past 10 plus years and have been producing HPDs um, and have most recently insulation and gypsum have third party verified HPDs with, uh, with Green Circle. Next slide. And Anne Marie is going to uh, talk to us about um, the how we produce an HPD um, within Syncovine and Certainty. Okay, as Tad mentioned before, I am part of the product stewardship team, and our product stewardship team is in the environmental health and safety and sustainability group. We work directly with technical marketing because Tad explained that what I do is so much fun making these HPDs that we tried to animate the slide. It's not working all that great, but there we go. Um, you can see that the drafting of any transparency documentation comes from our EHNS team. So from our product stewardship team, we work with people like Elise within the technical marketing groups that are for each division. The technical marketing groups help us reach out to the plants and to R&D to get the correct formulation like Tad's um, spaghetti sauce. We make up a very similar Excel spreadsheet and discuss what is in every single raw material, breaking it down first by the SDS and then going lower depending on what our disclosure levels are. And then when the documentation is finalized, we work with technical marketing to communicate that to the Salesforce group so they understand why we're doing HPDs or other transparency documentation and how that benefits them and helps them sell the product while they're reaching out to the customers. So we are all interconnected in our roles and responsibilities, but a lot of it, there's a lot of real close connection between the product stewardship group and our technical marketing division. Next slide, please. Oh, you have to click a few times because there's, yeah, just click them all. Um, this little staircase, it kind of illustrates where we are and where we're going. Um, we started doing HPDs Back in the day, I think it was 2007, 2008, I used to be the coding chemist for the Certainty Ceiling Tile Division. And that was my first exposure and introduction to HPDs as well as to Tad and his team. So I worked as the coding chemist supplying all the information before we had these really nice spreadsheets and a real proper way of doing it. I mean, this was the time when we made all of these via like PDF tools. I mean, they weren't fancy, but they were a start. And what that helped us do was incorporate some internal tools that we made. It helped us improve our stage gate um, process as well as our chemical screening because there wasn't really a good place in which to screen chemicals. And depending on how familiar you are with the HPD tool, there's over 60 different databases that they're taking information for human health and environmental impact. And it's a lot deeper dive and more information than you're just gonna get out of a raw material SDS. So that really helped us incorporate better materials and better selection. We went from ceilings to focus more, like Lisa had mentioned earlier, on our interior construction products, our ceilings, insulation, and gypsum. Those were the key markets because LEED is more strongly focused on interior products, and that's where we're seeing many more of the requests. And in 2015, we took the initiative to make sure that all of our HPDs the products that were represented in them matched the same product families in our SDSs. So we had more transparency and we had more collaboration just internally. And then in 2019, with the help of Green Circle, we have begun making third-party verified HPDs. We started with our gypsum group, and I believe we have eight or nine through them, and we have several through insulation, and I believe there's going to be more to come in 2021. Next slide, please. Okay, Elise, do you want to start with the pros? Yeah, sure thing. So the pros of creating an HPD, especially third-party verified HPD, is that we get to do an additional review of the bill of materials at each of our sites. Um, we get an internal opportunity to review the safety data sheets and make sure everything aligns. Uh, the third party verification gives us a fresh set of eyes on the HPD. So 
As we mentioned, Anne Marie um, helps to screen and put all of the HPD information together. But then we get to uh, work with the team at Green Circle, and they're going to verify uh, that what we have put is is accurate uh, reporting. As Chad mentioned, you get increased lead points. Um, you get 1.5 uh, materials for having a third-party verified HPD. And for us as a manufacturer, it gives us a competitive advantage to have a third-party verified HPD to prevent against greenwashing statements. Um, we also can meet any specifications uh, that are going to require third-party verified documents. So even if a project isn't going for lead, perhaps there's an owner uh, requirement that says that things need to be third-party verified. And then lastly, a pro for us um, at CertainTeed is that we can improve our raw materials um, based on the HPD output. So if Anne-Marie was to screen and give us an internal HPD, we could actually take a look and see what are the hazards that are coming out of that. And maybe we want to look to change our suppliers or formulations. Okay, I'll go over some of the cons of the third-party verification process. Um, one of the cons is discovering the, honestly, lack of transparency of some of our suppliers. John brought up the third part, the supplier HPD tool, so you can actually have the supplier fill something out, but it has helped us understand some of their limitations and work more closely with them. And in a few cases, it's made us rethink the suppliers that we're using for some of our raw materials because we want to be transparent. And when we reach um, some conflict and a wall where they can't help us with transparency, we have looked at other suppliers. Another con is establishing non-disclosure agreements. It does add some time to the process. There's a lot of back and forth, and sometimes it's time, it, is, it is time well spent, but it some can, can be a little bit frustrating how much time it has taken. Um, verifying it does increase the cost, and some of our businesses do have budgetary constraints, but if we can measure the return on investment, I mean, are we getting more sales? Hopefully we're getting more sales with third-party verification, Hopefully, it's more of a request from the architects, like you'll hear in the next part of the presentation. And, you know, putting this investment forward, making ourselves more transparent is going to benefit us in the long run. And it's also helped us with understanding the HPD content. So um, we understand the process, but we're also working with HPD Collaborative. I do um, sit in on their calls, and I am on some of their technical subcommittees. And it seems to be a universal concern that some of the specifiers aren't quite understanding the total contents of the HPD and you know why it's important. And that knowledge is growing through webinars such as these, as well as other ones that John and Tad has done ha have done pre uh, previously. But I think once we have a better understanding for the end users, that I think that will improve and also increase the requests for the HPDs throughout the industry. Next slide. Okay, so I'm finished. So I'd like to thank everyone for their time and I guess we can go on to the next presentation. Thank you, Anne-Marie and Elise. I really appreciate your presentation. It's great to hear your perspective of having been in the trenches trying to get that information and get these things together. I really like that slide, how you showed how, you know, you had to work together and there, were, there was multiple organizations within certainty that you had to coordinate with, eventually out to the sales team and eventually out to the customers, like we're going to hear now from Deanna. Uh, so Deanna, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Todd. Um, so my name is Deanna. I am a sustainability advisor at Perkins & Will. Um, a little bit about myself, I was an interior designer um, in Toronto and my um, passion for the environment and health and wellness really led me into becoming a sustainability advisor within architecture and design. Next slide. So today I'm going to be talking about sourcing third-party verified HPDs. Next slide. 
So why do we even look for HPDs in the first place? Next slide. Um, so the first thing is to better understand the impact of a building material on occupants' health. So since health and transparency is becoming a big thing in the industry right now, um, it's important to take healthy materials into consideration when doing design, uh, especially in the face of COVID where health and wellness is at the forefront of conversations with our clients. Um, HPDs also provide a really good apples to apples comparison between products. So because health um, and transparency is all done in the same format, it really helps um, someone like a designer or an architect understand the difference between products um, that are screened at the exact same um, level and have similar ingredients. And lastly, it helps us make better informed decisions on our product selection. Next slide. So what is it about third-party verified HPDs in particular? Um, well, the reason why us as designers and architects really love um, to look at third-party verified HPDs is because that means we really don't have to look at them. Um, and the good thing about that is that we know that all the information has been um, completed and is compliant already with the HPD open standard um, and that the reporting is credible. Um, there is um, the, the verification process is objective and independent, and there's no connection between the people who pre prepare the HPD and those who verify it. So it's a really unbiased assessment. Um, and it's great if you're doing lead and well projects, um, because in lead, like was mentioned before, this does allow for a higher point count when you're looking at materials, which alleviates a lot of time spent on the architect's and designers plate um, looking for compliant materials as well in the new version of well um, they actually mention that if you're pursuing the bpgo credit for material ingredients then you also get a point in well so it does um, help between different um, certifications and it also just removes the chances of error when disclosing the product's ingredients next slide um, another reason why Perkins Will in particular, um, why we like to look for HPDs is because we have our own um, list called the Perkins and Will Precautionary List. And essentially it's a list of 56 ingredients known to be harmful to both humans and the environment. Um, and what HPDs help us do is that they list um, all the ingredients um, within 100 or 1,000 parts per million. And it really helps us do a quick analysis of are there any precautionary list ingredients within this product, um, which also helps us make informed decisions about the products and the materials that we use within our spaces. Um, and if a material has an ingredient that is on the precautionary list, it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't use the products, but it's a really good way to start a conversation with our manufacturers. Um, and, and talking about, you know, these are things that we look for. Is there a way that we can remove these ingredients going forward? So uh, we have been successful as a, a company um, in, in helping lead manufacturers in a certain direction in terms of health and wellness and sustainability. Next slide. So in HPDs, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we look for. Um, and so now they have an up, like a better idea up front of what is in an HPD. I'm going to talk about um, non-verified HPDs and what we look for and why. And this will, I guess this will help um, really drive home the idea that a third-party verified HPD is really important. So next slide. So the biggest component um, that I look for within an HPD is the ingredient disclosure. And I usually look at only HPDs that have been verified um, at 1,000 parts per million or 100 parts per million. Next slide. So this portion of an HPD, oh, go back one more. Um, this portion of an HPD um, lets us as users really better understand the product at a glance. Um, when products are screened at 100 
um, parts per million, then we get more information about a product, which is great. Um, for manufacturers doing their own HPDs, um, especially in previous versions, not, in, not really including the new ones where you can pass it off to your suppliers, but um, if they have products where there are many, many ingredients, it can get overwhelming for a manufacturer at times, um, especially in cases where you have 50 plus ingredients. Um, so some items and sections can even be missed. Next. So in this particular case, the product supplier actually writes in here that they mandate that the raw material supplier provides disclosure of all their components considered to be hazardous. Um, they heavily rely on the raw material suppliers to be disclosing the right information in the right quantities. So this can have major implications um, because if you're relying on other people to provide the correct information, then you're also relying on yourself to interpret and document that information correctly. Um, although third-party verifiers don't audit um, if the supporting documentation is correct, they do make sure that the HPD has been completed with the supporting documentation that has been provided. Next slide. So with all this information that we've just learned about, how do we implement it within our own designs? So next slide. Uh, the first thing that we do is um, we update our specifications. So especially in instances, well, first of all, when we go through um, hard spec items, HPDs are definitely one of the things that we look for. And third-party verified HPDs um, just give you that a bit of reassurance that it's correct, that we don't have to go back to the manufacturer. There have been instances um, in some of our projects where we've noticed that sections have been missed because a certain chemical was disclosed and there was no reasoning as to why it was included. So we've had to go back to manufacturers and have them revise their HPDs to include notes um, to back up some of their claims. Um, so when we have third-party verified HPDs, we really don't have to do all that extra work. We know that um, that no matter what, it's going to be compliant. So in our specifications, um, where no particular product has been specified and we're leaving that in the hands of the contractor, um, it's good to ensure that the specs indicate that third-party verified HPDs are preferable um, to products that have an HPD that hasn't been third-party verified or ones that don't have HPDs at all. Um, and lastly, work with your suppliers. Um, let them know the importance of getting their HPDs third-party verified. Um, it's incredibly important to, to you and your clients and just the health and wellness of people, um, getting a better understanding of what materials we're putting into our spaces and to the level of hazard that uh, we could be exposing occupants to. Next slide. So in summary, having HPDs verified by third-party sources ensures that we as designers and architects know that we are putting, um, know what we are putting into our spaces and into our buildings. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Deanna. That was great. Uh, really good information. And uh, for those of you on the call, you can see now how these things actually get used. We, Get to hear how Perkins and Will is doing it. And right now we're in our section of time for questions. We've got about a little around 15 minutes or so for conversation and questions. So please enter any into the chat box. Uh, we do have uh, a couple here that I want to ask. And uh, this one will be for Deanna. Question on, uh, you know, you talked about integrating the requirement in the specs and that kind of thing. And when you are doing submittal reviews, is that something that you are doing or is that something that's up to someone else to, to make sure that if a particular uh, product group or CSI division had that requirement in there, are you checking to see that it is, you know, been done or are you just basically doing the research like if a particular company gets specified by, say, the subcontractor, are you going back just to see if those those do exist if they weren't submitted or or how are you following up on that? Um, so what we are in the process of doing is vetting the materials within our specs, um, where it's a performance spec in particular. Um, it's it's difficult to pre-vet things because it's based on um, performance metrics and not exactly an exact product. Um, so usually what happens is we put into our specs some kind of note about 
um, like I said before, um, products with HPDs, EPDs, like any sustainability documentation is preferable to those without. Um, and a lot of the case um, in lead projects, we've pre-vetted all our hard spec materials. So we have a good idea of the HPD count going into um, the tendering process. So for example, if we have 15 products that have HPDs already, then um, the contractor is responsible for fulfilling um, the remaining five or the remaining 25 if we're going for exemplary performance. Um, and I do, um, I do review the submittals. Um, oftentimes, now that I've done it enough, I know when to look for further information. Um, usually with like ceiling tiles, insulation, gypsum board, all those really big um, impact construction materials, I know for a fact that they do have um, EPDs, HPDs, recycled content information, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes down to very specific things like um, like a chair fabric, I doubt that they would go through the process and put all the money and time into creating an HPD because it's probably not as widely used as something like gypsum board. Um, so I do do the reviews. Um, and oftentimes, to be quite honest, looking up an HPD takes me maybe five minutes. I just, if nothing is included within the submittal and I know we need to start looking for them, I'll just type into Google, whatever the product is, HPD, and usually something will pop up. Um, and we also have a running list of HPDs that we've already verified. Um, so in-house, we have, we have a a really good idea of what products uh, to further look into and which ones we know that we shouldn't even put the time into. Great, thank you for that uh, response. I did get a question that just came in, another one for you. How does the Perkins and Will precautionary materials list compare to the Living Building Challenge Red List? Um, there is some overlap. The red list does not have as many ingredients as the Perkins Will precautionary list, but there is definitely some overlap. Um, we, I mean, ours is a little bit more stringent because it is a little bit more cumbersome. Um, but when we do see things that are um, living building challenge red list free, that is usually a pretty good indication that they're likely also precautionary list free. Okay. Great, thank you. I do have a question for Anne Marie and Elise. Uh, when you are working with your suppliers, uh, have you found, do you have any tips on maybe how to streamline that process or did you learn anything from that experience that tended to work better uh, when you were trying to get the information from the suppliers? Well, this is Elise. I'll, I'll jump in um, first. So, from our perspective, um, when we were doing information gathering, our suppliers sometimes weren't helpful at uh, disclosing information to us. Um, and so what we did was we actually leveraged because we work with Green Circle getting the third party verification, we could leverage uh, the team at Green Circle to actually contact that supplier directly um, and they would feel more comfortable disclosing the information at that level um, again because there's some proprietary things that they can they can keep so uh, that's from my perspective and Marie I don't know if you have anything to add I think what I would add to that is I think it matters what you ask for if you say you know I'm doing an HPD nowadays more suppliers understand what that means but to explain it to them so they feel comfortable i think the um supplier hpd tool that's out right now is going to help tremendously because they can keep things business confidential any cbi information can remain confidential but you're still getting to know what the potential hazards are and working with the green circle team it was easier to pair up and just to explain that, you know, we are doing a health product declaration. This is our disclosure level. These are the limits that we're at if we're at 1,000 ppm's or 100 ppm's. And we're using your product 
and you know giving them a range of what we're using you know please assist us in working with the third party verifier to disclose anything that would come up above the threshold that we're targeting okay excellent thank you both for that response we do have another question that came in here it says i recently saw an hpd that appeared to be a shared hpd with three versions of a particular product fire rated and standard is this a thing how can i determine which version and the one with the lt1 ingredients etc i don't know if that's a question for you john or if any of our panelists can answer that i'll take a first shot um, because we do allow um, in order to allow manufacturers to reduce the total number of hpds that they have to supply the standard does outline um, guidelines for how to group products under an HPD and without knowing specifically which HPD um, and I'm not entirely sure from the way the question was phrased exactly how it was done but you should be able to um, the ingredients for the, the products should be the same so if there's three products or three classes of products that are included on the HPD, the LT1s um, that are listed should apply to all of them. But I'd have to go back to the standard um, guidance for exactly how to group products under a single HPD. Mm -hmm. We have a few products that are grouped together in families. And I would just look at the three products that are possibly on that same HPD, I would look at anything that has a percent range zero to 10% or whatever starts at zero, because that's probably, meaning if it's zero to 10%, either it has it in or it may not have it in. And also I would inquire with the manufacturer to say like, can you give me additional information? Because if that, raw material is causing you some sort of concern because it is a benchmark one or an LTP one or something, I would double check with them to see if it is possible if they can break that out. And I would reinforce the advice to talk to the manufacturer. Um, you'll find that manufacturers that are committed enough to be doing HPDs really are committed to getting the information out there. And if you have questions, um, they would like to um, address them. And I'm guessing that they may also amend the HPD to provide that information in their notes. Um, because if you have a question, other people will as well. Plus, it's good for them to know that people are looking at their HPDs. One of the things that we find is that manufacturers spend a lot of time and money developing HPDs. And a lot of times they feel like they're launching them into a black hole because they don't get feedback like that. So they um, would love to be hearing questions like that. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for the response. And I, I will, I do want to reinforce what uh, John just said, and also Deanna. She she basically said, you know, start pushing back on the manufacturers asking for this information, trying to request it. I do think giving the manufacturers feedback. You know, you did hear from Elise saying, hey, we've spent time and money doing this, and you know, we got to make sure there's a uh, return on investment for us. So the more of you that can start asking these questions, I think is really going to continue to drive the market. And I do know that there's a huge learning curve. It's getting better. It's definitely getting better. Uh, last year at Greenbuild, I know I did three learning labs and they were all basically packed out with people. And I talked a lot about how important it is to Take a look at this information what it really means how to use it you know so these webinars like we're doing today are really uh, helpful to spread the word and the more of us that start asking these questions and the more of us that start requesting the information from the manufacturers like the folks at certainty and sangoban is going to really drive that and I'm, I'm very excited to hear that perkins and will is is definitely integrating this into their specs i know we have quite a few other architects and designers on this call today. I hope you're doing the same thing because you know this is what is going to drive the market. And you know I, I wanted to circle back. There was one more question. Uh, 
when you said, Elise, that you know you were talking about what, by doing this, one of the pros was that allows you to look at some of the raw materials that you're utilizing. I was just curious, you know, uh, and and I, I think it actually ties in well to what Anne Marie said is on the evolution of the whole program that Certainty has done. You know, are you finding that this is something that is driving your new product development teams or being utilized more or or how can you just speak a little more about that what you said about you know understanding the materials and what you can do with that sure so um for us at certainty our new product development goes through um a green screen process anyhow uh, but when we have existing products in our portfolio that we have determined we would like to create an HPD um, and we go through all the steps to get more detailed information to create the HPD, which goes well beyond the disclosure for our safety data sheets, which obviously we have for all of our products. Um, it does help to drive product improvement. And I think as Anne-Marie talked about, when we work with our raw material suppliers, it, it could be a combination of if an HPD gives us um, certain hazards that we're not comfortable with, um, that could be an impetus for change. Or if we're working with a supplier that is uh, maybe very difficult to work with as far as helping us meet our goals of transparency to our customers, um, we might look in another direction to change raw material suppliers. So that's how we use it um, internally as product improvement measures. Excellent. And I do think that the supplier HPDs are going to help that. And I, I do think that the more that the manufacturers are also pushing back on their suppliers and letting them know, hey, this is critical. You know, for us to be competitive in the market or to do business, we need this information. We understand your concern, and uh, I am excited that you are using it, you know, as part of your analysis and screening process. Um, we have time for one more question. Uh, there was a question that came in that asked about how, what is the, the typical time frame or, or timeline for doing a third-party verification of an HPD? Well, I can tell you here at Green Circle, we have a proven process that you know, we try to shoot for doing any of our certification or verification work within a window of 75 business days, about three months. However, if we find that everything's really well organized by the entity that put together the HPD that's requesting the third party verification and that there's good data, there's not a lot of missing information from suppliers, we can typically turn it around quicker than that. Uh, in the example that Elise gave though, where there were some challenges with some suppliers that were just unresponsive and then Green Circle got involved, that does spread out the timeline a while. And, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, so the ones we did with Certainty took, took a while. I mean, it went beyond 75 business days. And a lot of that was just because of delays with getting the information from the suppliers. So we do think that uh, it's very important to be fully organized. It's very important to have as much of your information as you can. And typically what we're going to do is if someone wants us to third party verify any of their HPDs, we're going to have a meeting with them beforehand and have them walk us through their spreadsheets, show us an example of what they're collecting, what detail they've gotten, identify if there's missing suppliers. And that allows us when we develop our proposal to do that work to be clear on what we think the time frame is going to be. So Anyway, this has been a great webinar. I wanna thank all of our panelists. Really appreciate all of you taking the time to do this. Also wanna thank all of you that were able to join today. Uh, we will be sending this out. Uh, this recording is going to be sent out as well as uh, a copy of the slides. So you will be receiving those. And for, for people that weren't able to attend, you know, during the live session, uh, that comes out to you as well. So you will be getting all this information. So. With that, it looks like it's right about three o'clock. So I wanna thank everybody. Hope you have a great day and uh, look forward to um, more and more of this activity happening in the marketplace. Appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, everybody.